The genetic traits we pass on to our kids nearly seem to be decided by randomness. We have no idea what our baby's physical or psychological characteristics will be at birth. But there are other factors involved than our DNA. Our children embody such characteristics. The way kids are raised has an equal impact on their development as their genomic traits. Our genetic traits will determine the outcome of the first election for acquiring skills, but there will be a second election. In the first three months of life, we absorb information from our environment and make decisions about what to concentrate based on our own internal motives. Keep in mind that a newborn baby's brain is really very alert. It has basically only four experiences, including running away, battling, freezing, and hibernating. The brain will adsorb those four events and use them to shape a person's personality if there is no longer any threat to be feared based on those early months. To overcome two obstacles, freezing, to loving and caring, and hibernation, to pondering and thinking, running away will lead to a love of motion and change. You may be thinking, how much running and battling can a newborn do? How many experiences can he have at this point in his life? Of course, everything is taking place on a level. It has to do with how long the baby cries before someone comforts him. It has to do with how many times he makes a noise like that. Now, there are numerous viewpoints to this, but what's crucial for now is that the personality traits inherited from our parents and triggered by our initial experiences as newborn infants will create the basis of who we are and what drives us on a deep, personal level. Take a good look at your children right now. Do you see them? What really motivates them? I'm curious as to what drives them internally. The majority of people may be summed up by one or two characteristics at most. They enjoy tasks that include moving and changing, winning, giving and caring for others, or reflection and thought. Once you have determined their main driving force, you must be aware of the following. This is what you just determined is their life's motto. This is their never-ending energy source. It'll give them a reason to live. It is what will make them unique. What subject matter ought they to research? What position ought they to accept? What will bring them fulfillment and joy? These fundamental motives will develop their natural abilities. You see, we all have our goals and problems, and we all want the best for our children, unless we, as parents, allow our own judgment and expectations to stand in the way. The fact is, we are not their children. We are not them. Our child's extraordinary skill, is not a result of our desire for him to be an athlete. An athlete can also be replaced by an attorney, surgeon, etc. And the same is true for minor things that happen every day, it is ineffective to make our children behave or accomplish things only because we would want it to happen to us at work. The second layer of fundamental internal motivation sits on top of the first. The second layer is a combination of our studies and personal experiences, and it is made up of all we have learned from others around us. In essence, it's who the world wants us to be. It will encourage us to act in a particular manner. But it doesn't fill us with vigor and happiness. We act in this way because it makes our parents happy, because it helps us obtain high marks, and because we have discovered that if we act in this way, other people will like us. The next layer is unstable. When we don't receive the benefits that go along with the behavior, it doesn't provide us energy, it uses up energy, and it fades. We refer to it as extrinsic motivation. Of course, there is fundamental instruction in manners and politeness. I'm not discussing that. Some boundaries must be established inside the limbic system, as well as new communality guidelines that must be learned. But after that, we might not be too prescriptive. If we do this, we run the danger of burying such intrinsic drives behind a heavy layer of social pressures. It's not the end of the story, I'm sorry to say. Even in a field you don't truly love, you can excel. 
You could achieve great success and gain popularity, who knows, you might even become wealthy and famous. However, those three things will ultimately continue to escape you. These include happiness, joy, satisfaction, and missing out on it. It is simply a terrible waste. What, therefore, can we do or ought to we do? As parents, our preferred option is to provide our kids as many opportunities as we can to try new things and figure out for themselves what they enjoy and don't like. Allow children this time and space to learn about themselves and society, but keep them bound by laws at all times. We must let them free to figure it out on their own. Let your child climb a small mountain if they want to, if they are scared, you can always help them. Don't be too doughty and prevent your kids from climbing because you're afraid. The possibility of their falling may be real. Possibly, there might be a few scratches. So what? What if your child's journey to this little peak marks the beginning of a journey that ultimately leads him to the summit of Mount K, too? Then again, maybe he'll just always have a soft spot in his heart for mountain, and that's okay. In any case, you shouldn't try to deny him the opportunity. More limitations mean less opportunities for children's realistic selves to shine through, and that's true whether you're ascending a mountain or not. On the other hand, be careful. Nor am I arguing that you should applaud them on as they try new things. It's possible that you may change someone's motivation from inner to external. Your child may start doing things for the sake of getting your praise and admiration rather than because they genuinely love doing them. To sum up, it's best to not put too many limits on them or worry too much about how they turn out. Allow children the freedom to explore their interests and preferences on their own, do not disregard their originality as a result. Allow them to do so if they choose, provide them with knowledge and choices if they do, but ultimately allow them to make up their minds. Don't try to push your will on them or pressure them to do anything. You'll only lead them misguided, with no sense of purpose in life. Just let them choose their own fate. Let them develop into their own unique selves, as the natural world would have it. Stay connected.